up, down, red, blue, left, right, reproductive rights, Second Amendment rights, COVID, vaccines, on and on it goes. It can be and has been exhausting for all of us. I pay attention to what's going on, but more importantly, I focus on what I can do to make a positive difference in people's lives. Hi, I'm John Keane, and state senator and candidate for re-election. I want to say thank you to the residents of the Norfolk and Plymouth District, Quincy, Abington, Braintree, Holbrook, and Rockland for your trust and for the honor of representing you in the Massachusetts State Senate. And with redistricting, I want to say hello to the residents of Hanover, who, with the next election, will be part of the Norfolk and Plymouth District. During my time in elective office and in the State Senate, I've focused on performance, not politics. I focus on helping people getting things done, not blaming, not seeking credit, and not getting caught up in the raging political battles. It's about helping people and getting results. When people call my office, their calls are answered. During the height of the pandemic, every day we were reaching out to state and federal agencies, helping people with housing, unemployment, and access to food issues. I believe our constituent response was second to none. And I truly appreciate the work of everybody in my office, especially Doreen Bagut, our constituent services director. She and the folks in my office worked day and night to get people the help they needed. We continue this work every day, connecting people to their government. It is and always will be our top priority. It's also important to listen and to learn from people. I'm out in the district meeting constituents at senior centers, town halls, libraries, and coffee shops, and running into them at the supermarket or on the red line. Just this past week, I was in Abington, Rockland, and Holbrook talking to people about veterans' benefits, housing assistance, gun control, water infrastructure, and so many other matters. A short while ago on the red line on my way home from work, I had a great conversation with somebody who recognized me from a Zoom call. We talked about mental health issues and housing. What he knew and shared through his lived experiences was incredible. Recently, a woman from Quincy dropped by my state house office. We talked for almost 45 minutes about gun licensing and the Second Amendment. She posted on social media about our discussion, and somebody questioned the amount of time we spent talking about the issue. Her response was that she felt the most important part of an elected official's job is talking to constituents. I agree. Every time I talk with somebody, I learn something new. We can't let the all or nothing red or blue debates prevent us from talking, listening, learning, and respecting each other. When I first ran for the state senate, I promised to be accountable and active. I have been accountable by making my record of votes public. I've responded to thousands of emails, telephone calls, and letters of all kinds on all kinds of issues. I provide updates through social media, write columns for local newspapers, appear on local cable shows, and hold district office hours. While I have not always voted the way Senate leadership, lobbyists, special interest, or even some of my constituents may have wished, I have always been upfront in explaining my positions. People know where I stand. As for being active, I have contributed to every major piece of legislation that has come before the State Senate, working on bills before they come to the Senate floor, and then offering amendments to improve the bills and to advance the interests of the people I represent. Local aid has always been a priority. That means more funding for our traditional public schools, for vocational technical schools, special education schools, police, fire, libraries, DPWs, veterans and senior programs. We've been successful in helping pass landmark bills to address the opioid epidemic. Working with local students, we passed first in the nation legislation to address tobacco and the rapid increase in vaping. The federal government is now following our lead. We continue to work to improve our mental health system, which is needed now more than ever, and to control health care costs. And we have protected reproductive rights. Working with local officials and the school building authority, we've upgraded many of our schools and built new ones throughout the district. We have built bridges and roads and invested in critical infrastructure. As the Senate Chair of the Housing Committee, I've worked with my colleagues to keep people in their homes during the pandemic and to invest in affordable, workforce, supportive, senior, and veterans housing and to help first-time home buyers. We've done all this in a fiscally responsible manner, making sure our budget is sustainable and working to increase our stabilization or rainy day account in the process. I say we when I mention all these happenings because it truly has been a joint effort. It's the people who live and work in our communities who make the difference. There are many challenges facing the Commonwealth. We must continue to provide essential services, invest in our environment, transportation, and in early education, K through 12, and higher education. We must spur economic growth and jobs and continue to do so with a balanced budget. I look forward to these challenges. My wife, Jean, and I have watched our sons grow. They're older now. The youngest is a senior in college. When I look at them, I think about today's world and about their world of tomorrow. I still feel like I can make a difference in both. I thank you for allowing me the honor and privilege of serving as your state senator, 
and respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you.